Good morning, everyone. Welcome to services at the 6th and Washington Streets Church of Christ. I know we have a few visitors this morning, and we appreciate you joining us this morning. I invite you back to every opportunity you have. If you are visiting, uh, there's an opportunity to please complete one of the attendance cards you'll find in the back of the pew in front of you. If there's anything we can do for you in terms of a call or a visit, perhaps you'd like a Bible study, uh, we'd be happy to address any need you have. Those who will be taking a public part this morning, Tim Wells will be leading our singing. John Dollison will have our opening prayer. Co and Eddie will have our scripture reading. Dennis Dye will lead our minds at the Lord's table. And Harry will be speaking to us this morning while Roger is away. And we always appreciate the talent that we have uh, that when Roger is away, we still get excellent lessons and excellent messages. So let Tim get things started. Number 99, 9-9. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Sing, oh, us, his wonderful love proclaim. Hail him, hail him, highest dark angels in glory. Strength and honor, get to his holy name. Like a shepherd. Jesus will guard his children, in his arms he carries them all day long. Praise him, praise him, that love is excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins he suffered and bled and died. He, our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail him, hail him, Jesus the crucified. Sound his praises, Jesus who bore sorrows. Love unbounded, wonderful, deep, and strong. Praise him, praise him, that love is excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Heavenly portals, light with Hosanna's wings. Jesus, Savior, reigneth forever and ever. Crown him, crown him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise him, praise him, that love is excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Prayer minds for Lord's Supper will sing number. 155, 155. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. Oh, 
Good morning. If you would, take the small communion cup and the two in front of you and peel back the, uh, the cellophane layer to reveal the unleavened bread. We'll use it here in a moment. I wanted to talk a couple minutes about the word redemption. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19 says, Knowing that you are redeemed, ransomed from your futile ways, inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. The word redemption can be defined as a recovery of something pawned or mortgaged, or the payment of an obligation, or to free or liberate something from an oppressive situation. In ancient times, it was often used uh, concerning buying slaves. A couple Old Testament examples of its use in Leviticus 25, where it's talking about the, describing the year of Jubilee. Uh, financial problems can compel a person to sell property, but later, if, if the person then prospered, they were able to buy that back. Uh, and, or even a relative could buy it back uh, to keep it in the family. And Ruth. Chapter 4 illustrates this because of uh, poverty. Naomi's husband had sold his property, and then years later when Naomi returned from Moab with her daughter-in-law Ruth, uh, Boaz's uh, kinsman was able to redeem or buy back the property to keep it in the family. And then Deut Deuteronomy 15, 15 says, You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you. So Israel was brought bought basically by God's mercy and uh, brought out of Egypt so that way Isaiah or Israel became his people. But before we became Christians, we were slaves to sin. Uh, when we were born, we belonged to God, but then sin separates us from God. And then due to Jesus' sacrifice, he redeems us. He buys us back from that situation to bring us back to God. Uh, Hebrews 9.12 says about Jesus, He entered once into all of the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. So Jesus voluntarily paid the price of dying on the cross to purchase us back from, from sin, so we're no longer under sin, we now belong to him. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20 says, You were bought with a price. Let's remember these things as we give thanks for the bread. Father in heaven, we're again thankful for another Lord's Day you've blessed us with and the opportunity to be here today, and, and especially for this time that we have to reflect on Jesus and his willingness to come and fulfill the plan of salvation and to offer himself on the cross for our sins. Help us always to appreciate what was done for us and realize that we have, we're unable to do anything uh, without his willingness to be the sacrificial lamb for our sins. Help us always to appreciate that and think of that as we take this. Pray this through his name. Amen. Let's continue our prayer for the cup as well. Again, Father, we, we pray that as we take this cup, we remember Jesus' blood and realizing that it was by his blood that we were bought to be able to be back in, in your family, to be adopted as sons, and be in your kingdom. Help us, Father, to always appreciate what it has done for us. We pray this through his name. Amen.
Also, at this time, we'll go ahead and uh, give thanks for the uh, contribution and the blessing that we received. There are baskets in the back that you can put a contribution in as you, as you come or go to services. But let's give thanks for what we have. Again, Father, we continue our prayer, thanking you for the, the many blessings that we've received in this life. We've been blessed in many ways. We live in a very prosperous time in the history of the world and in a prosperous nation. We pray, Father, that you'd help us to be good stewards of the things you've blessed us with, with the, the, both the time and the talents and the abilities that you've given us. We'd use them in ways that would be to the to most good and to bring glory to you. We pray, Father, that the contributions would, could be used for the, the growth of your kingdom and to do the good works that you'd have us to do. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. Number 724, 724. steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I will hope in him. Steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I will hope in him. Psalm before the prayer scripture reading and lesson will be number 40, number four zero. If you're able to, please stand. Come, let us all unite to sing. God is love. Let heaven and earth their praises ring.
roll call, and the last one being number 576, 576. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to come and sing praises to you and to worship you and to learn more about you. Uh, please be with those who are not able to make it out today and comfort them and strengthen them and help them to come back as, as soon as possible. And we thank you that we're allowed to camp here and able to come here and, and not be persecuted or harassed. and. Uh, it's, it's such a blessing, and we ask that you watch over those in the world who are not as, as lucky as we are, and watch over them, and keep them safe, keep them strong. Uh, we ask that you put some leaders in charge of this country who will seek to do what you want to do, put you first, and please you. As we uh, listen to Harry's lesson today, please open our hearts and minds to your words and, and help us to drink them in and understand them and make the most of them and, and then apply them in our lives so that uh, as when the time comes when we leave here that people will, will see you and us and, and be drawn to you and come to know you better and, and ultimately find their way home to come to your kingdom. And we thank you for loving us so much that uh, you sent your son down to show us how to, how to worship you and how to come to know you. and and the many blessings that he brought to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's scripture reading is from Psalms, chapter 118, verses 1 through 4. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. morning. If you are visiting, we want you to know that uh, you literally are honored guest, and we're glad that you're here and hope that if you're able to return sometime, you will. And if you are a member of the body of Christ, we're glad that you're here. And uh, what a privilege we have this morning to come together as the people of God and to worship the almighty true living God. Sometimes when you really stop and think about that, it can cause you to stop and really try to contemplate what that means. And then there's other times when we get it on the fly when we're running and we're just grateful and thankful. I know last week we spoke about repentance and sometimes it can be tough. Sometimes it's gut-wrenching, sometimes it's heart-opening, but Today's lesson will reveal why repentance is so key. It's so key because God's love is so awesome and so great. Our goal this morning is uh, a little different, but uh, it's the same always. But um, our goal is always when we come together to worship God is to uh, leave uh, just maybe a little closer, uh, a little better greater appreciation, uh, a little more peace and joy uh, in who we serve and how he protects and takes care of us uh, because of his son. Uh, so hopefully that will happen today, but here's what I really kind of hope we leave with. You read it, the passage said that we are to be thankful because God is good, and then it says that his love endures forever. And it says a little bit, in, a lot in a little bit of space. It says, let Israel say that his love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say that his love endures forever. 
And then it says, let all those who fear the Lord say, his love endures forever. And I want to ask you a question. What's the next automatic statement that comes after that? Is it not you? Do you not read that passage and go, oh my goodness gracious, I'm next. Let me say, the good stas- the good st- the steadfast of the Lord endures forever. So we're going to look at Psalm 118, uh, the first part of it to, uh, this morning. We'll look at the second part this evening. Uh, Psalm 113 through 118 are called the Egyptian Haley. And what that means is uh, they cover the Passover and it's a praise. So from Psalm 113 to 118, uh, it's primarily focusing on the Passover, but not only the Passover, because we know that's when God's uh, greatness was revealed and his promise to his people. So here's what I want you to do this morning. I want you to, there's parts of the psalm where he talks about, we don't know exactly when, where this happened, but he's talking about being encompassed by countries around him, whether he's in war or if they're just coming in on them. But then he also blurts out into this personal thing. I was falling. I was this. I was that. So here's what I want you to do with me this morning. We're going to look at this. And where he says, I, I want you to appreciate it. But more importantly, I want you to put in that place where your challenge was. Or what the Lord gave you peace about. Or how the Lord put your feet on solid ground when you were falling. Because really, that's the essence of the Psalms. We try to understand the writer. We try to appreciate the context. But I don't know that anywhere in Scripture do we really see our heart's desires than in the Psalms. Because we have everything from exaltation and praise and worship to utterly, Lord, I can't believe I did it again. To I can't get along with people. To I love everybody. And it covers the whole gamut. And we're going to try to do that this morning. So here's my introduction. It says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. I'm going to read a rapid array of what a lot of translators say about that statement, just to kind of give you an idea of maybe it'll nestle in and settle us a little bit this morning. I won't give you all the Bible uh, translations names, but I will read some of what they say. Here's what some of them say. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His loving devotion endures forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving kindness endures forever. Tell the Lord how thankful you are. Because he is kind and always merciful. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Give thanks to the Lord, because he is good, and his love is eternal. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his gracious love is eternal. Give thanks to Yahweh, for he is good, for his kindness is for all time. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his his loyal love endures. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving kindness endures forever. His loving kindness endures forever. If you have served the Lord for any length of time, we know that feeling. We understand God's mercy and grace. And yet, if you're human, you've also been on the other side of that. And dealt with some of God's discipline in your life. And some of the challenges, does he love me? Will he forgive me? In this passage, I want to look at the who, the what, and the why. So just to start off on the who, we're going to look a little bit about. So God made some covenants with men that he's never broken. Because God's promises are sure. You can bank on them. 
He destroyed the world except for Noah and his family because men were bent on corruption and evil only. But then he made a promise to Noah. He said that he would set a bow in the sky that he would never, ever, ever destroy mankind and living creatures on the earth by a flood. I know rainbows are pretty. I know they're beautiful. I know sometimes the world thinks they can take something so beautiful and so wonderful and so meaningful from the almighty true living God and actually try to utilize it on the opposite end of what he's actually saying, but that's beside the point. The point is, when we see a rainbow in the sky, as common as it's become to us, and as magnificent as it is, it's God's sign that he remembers not to destroy the world again by flood. Whether you pause when you see the next one is up to you. Whether you don't even notice it is no big deal. But it's a magnificent sign to mankind and especially to God's people. Abraham was told to go to a country that he did not know and God made a promise to him that he would bless him, his lineage, and through him, all nations would be blessed, and we know that that's Jesus. One of the challenges facing the Jews is that they think that they're the reason that God loves them, and the reason that God loves them is because of the promise he made to Abraham and his people, which includes all of mankind, especially through Jesus. Here's a little thought uh, in our same context. We'll just kind of get a little view of who God is. So Psalm 113 and through 118 is, again, talking primarily about the Passover, but it's exalting who God is. So let's see if we can get just a little introduction here and listen to what the Psalm says about God. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God who is seated on high, who looks down on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. When Israel went out from Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of a strange language, Judah became his sanctuary, Israel his dominion. The sea looked and fled, Jordan turned back, the mountains skipped like rams, the hills like lambs. What ails you, O sea, that you flee? O Jordan, that you turn back, O mountains that you skip like rams, O hills like lambs. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the God of Jacob, who turns the rock into a pool of water and the flint into a spring of water. Depending on your biblical knowledge, you saw all kind of references there. Giving the children water when they were crying the blues and Moses had the rock, staff, taking them out of Egypt by a mighty hand, parting the Red Sea, and yet looking back and seeing the Egyptians didn't make it. Crossing over the Jordan, the promise that was made. Now, contrast this to this. Listen to this. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory for the sake of your steadfast love and your faithfulness. Why should the nation say, where is their God? This is what they think people in Egypt and surrounding uh, countries when they were conquering Israel were asking these questions, kind of taunting them, where is their God? Our God is in the heavens, and he does all that he pleases. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths, but they do not speak, eyes, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear, noses, but they do not smell. They have hands, but they do not feel, feet, but they do not walk, and they do not make a sound in their throat. Those who make them become like them. So do all who trust in them. O oh, Israel, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O oh, house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord has remembered us. He will bless us. 
He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both the small and the great. The steadfast love of the Lord endures forever. That's the magnet. That's the attraction. That's the sustaining power that allows us to walk in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And what an awesome, awesome thing it is. God's love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, I want you to think of your favorite character or your favorite story in the Old Testament and listen to this. Let Israel say his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say the priesthood. Jesus is our high priest. He's the ultimate high priest. Actually, Aaron and those guys were doing everything they were doing because Jesus was going to ultimately do it. His steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, fear the Lord. They're not really in Israel. It, it, it certainly encompasses them, but it's also those outside of them. You might think of Nicodemus. You might think of Cornelius, a Gentile who in his household feared the Lord. You might even think of yourself. He says, let those who fear the Lord say his steadfast love endures forever. I have written in my Bible, let Harry Ogletree say his steadfast love endures forever. Why? Because I need it. Let the church say his steadfast love endures forever. And then he goes personal on them. He's talking acclamation for everybody, and then he dives into personal. Out of my distress, I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. Can you not echo those sentiments somewhere in your life at some time? Out of your distress, you called on the Lord, and he set you free? That's what he's saying. Don't just hear it from some guy who wrote it years ago. Out of my distress, I called on the Lord, and the Lord answered me and set me free. The, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do to me. The Lord is on my side as my helper. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. And then he says this. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. You might have, like me, thought of a passage in, I think it's Proverbs chapter 3. I want you to listen to this just for a second. Proverbs chapter 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. We could keep reading. Here's a thought. We trust mankind when we get in our cars and drive home, and especially when we're on roads going 55 to 60 miles an hour, two feet from another car coming this way, and we have no idea who it is. We trust man when we get in an airplane and go on a trip, and when we get on a ship and sail across the ocean. Can we not trust the almighty true living God to direct our steps? That's what he's saying. Our steps, one in front of the other, to get where we're going, to serve him faithfully. We think about walking in the paths of righteousness sometimes. And here's the, so do you realize if kids who first started to walk only thought about falling, they would never walk and learn how to walk and run? Here's the freedom that we have in Christ. We have to get from I'm so worried about doing right and wrong to living in righteousness. To living for the Lord faithfully as we grow in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we only deal with right and wrongs 24, it'll stop you from progress. You won't be able to run as a child, if you will. Your transportation won't exceed your bedroom. But as we grow, and our Lord, and walk in the paths of righteousness as the good shepherd leads. Ah, 
then we get to be thankful. Then we get to be grateful. Why? Because we see his work in our lives. And then what's the essence? We see his work in the lives of those that we love. We see his work in the lives of those who are struggling and having challenges. We see his work in the lives of those who have unbearable burdens, and yet they stand up and carry them. Why? Because his love endures forever. What shall I do? The Lord is on my side. All nations surrounded me. Can you vision this? All nations surrounded me. And then he says this powerfully. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me on every side. Have you ever felt that way? In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. And then listen to this as though we didn't get the picture. They surrounded me like bees. They went out like a fire among thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. If you've ever done this, it's not funny. I've done it when I read meters before, stumbled up on a... Well, I was reading meters, and um, I heard this noise that sounded like water to me. It's the best I had. It sounded like water. It was going, ooh, ooh, ooh. So when I thought, somebody's water's running. So I took the meter, put it back on there, hit it, and bam. Anybody know what it was? It was a hornet's nest. Have you ever been close enough to hear their wings inside of a hornet's nest? It's a beautiful sound, except for you don't want to disturb them. Man, I kid you not. This thing hit me like, bam! I, I'm not kidding. I could not see. I went down on my knees. I came up. I had no idea what had happened. Knocked on the door and said, ma'am, something just happened. I can't see. The lady's looking at me. She goes, oh, son, you've been hit by a hornet. I said, a hornet? She goes, oh, yeah, there's a nest out there. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I'm driving back to the shop after I finished my route. My face is swelled up. Man, it felt like somebody took a spike and just drove it right into my head. A hornet. My goodness gracious, when you think about that. Bees surrounded him. You've seen the cartoons. You've seen the funny guys. You've seen the comedians running over the hillside with bees chasing them. It's funny watching it. But not so funny for the guy. But we all get the picture, though. It's, it's, it's a nuisance. Sometimes we do that with flies. We do it with mosquitoes. But it's different when it's bees. Why? Because they can do a little bit of damage. He says, I went out like a fire of thorns in the name of the Lord. He says, I cut them off. And then listen to this. He's back to I again. Listen to this. I was pushed hard so that I was falling. But the Lord helped me. Have you been there? Have you been there? I was pushed hard. And I was falling. But the Lord helped me. That's the God we serve. That's the God whose love endures forever. That's why we come together to encourage each other and to worship him in spirit and truth and try to do the best we can in sharing it with other people. I was falling. And the Lord helped me. So I was falling, and the Lord helped me. Then what are you going to do, Harry? Well, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Why? When we trust in him and we overcome challenges and we trust in him and give him the glory and the place for the joys we experience, all of a sudden he becomes my song. He is my salvation. That's actually taken from Exodus chapter 15 um, when Moses and the Israelites crossed the Red Sea, it opened. Remember, they were taunting Moses, would you bring us out here to die? We, we couldn't die in Egypt. And then God opened the Red Sea. Now, here's what's interesting. It looks so inviting that the Egyptians said, we can go over too. Didn't work out so well, though, did it? God brought the waters back, destroyed them. They saw it. They realized who had done it. And then they realized, the steadfast love of the Lord endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song has become my salvation. Glad songs of salvation are in the tents of the righteous. Uh, how about this? The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord exalts. 
the right hand of the Lord does valiantly. That's a terminology, again, coming from Exodus and God's hand. But the Lord said to Moses, now you shall see what I, do to, I will do to Pharaoh, for with a strong hand he will send them out, and with a strong hand he will drive them out of his land. God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob as God Almighty. But by my name, the Lord, I did not make myself known to them. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land in which they lived as sojourners. Moreover, I've heard the groaning of the people of Israel, whom the Egyptians hold as slaves, and I have remembered my covenant. Say, therefore, to the people of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will deliver you from slavery to them, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment. I will take you to be my people, and I will be your God. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God who has brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will bring you into the land that I swore to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to you for possession. I am the Lord. Moses spoke thus to the people of Israel. And it goes on to say that they did not listen. But God brought them out by the power of his right hand. The right hand of the Lord does bountifully. The right hand of the Lord exalts. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. And then he goes back into a personal, I'm in the presence of God again. And listen to what he says. I shall not die, but I shall live. And not only that, recount the deeds of the Lord. Have you been there? Have you struggled with your faith? Have you had challenges in your personal life? I shall not die, but I shall live. And recount the deeds of the Lord. And then listen to this. This is about as brutal as love gets. The Lord has disciplined me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Most aunts and uncles are pretty good with discipline for nieces and nephews, and so they should be. But something happens to them when they look into that little fella or that little lady's eyes, and it's their own. They discipline them a little bit differently, don't they? You know why? Because it's their child. See, I don't have a problem correcting you quickly. But my kids, hey, I don't know that he really meant to do that. He didn't mean to knock it over. I know he wasn't supposed to be in there with it, but he didn't mean to. But everybody else, we go, hey, I told you not to go in that room with the drink. It's balance. Is it not? It's a balance. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has disciplined me severely, but listen to this. But he has not given me over to death. It says in Hebrews that we respect and honor our fathers who discipline us. That is in the same category. Shall we not much more honor and respect God? There are people who think love means let people run loose. Yeah, I was one of those kids. I wasn't really trying to be a smart like I was being serious at the time. And they say things like, this is going to hurt me more than it does you. And I'd say, well, then give me the paddle. I mean, I, I, hey, that's the best I had. I was in the fourth grade. What do you want me to do? <laughs> As an adult, I get it. As a child, I did not. But now that I look at my life and where I am, I am grateful and I am thankful. I don't know that discipline really is joyful, but I know the fruits of it are wonderful and can be. He says, I shall not die, but I shall live. Recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has disciplined me severely, but he has given me over to death. And then he says this, open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you've answered me and have become my salvation. When you think about the Lord disciplining you and being grateful and thankful that he's blessed you, you gotta wonder why. Why is that? It's very simple. Because he loves us. He loves you, he loves me, and he loves the whole world enough that he sent his son as a redemption. If by faith, 
people would believe in him. That, I don't know if it gets any better than that. The ultimate, I love you, we know, is in Jesus. Our message this morning is very simple. We want to make sure that in the midst of all that goes on in the world, we don't forget to appreciate God's love. It's steadfast, and it endures forever. Now, why does it endure forever? Because it not only takes care of us now, it will be with us for eternity for those who know and love him. God's ultimate love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he's not believed in the name of the only son of God. And this is the judgment. The light comes into the world and the people love darkness rather than light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked hates the light and does not come to the light lest his work should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works may be carried out in God. This might be among many passages if we really could just pause and grasp it. Might be the heartbeat of the Bible. Bruce 13 8 says Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. That's the personification of the statement that we started with. His steadfast love endures forever. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. The point that we're trying to make this morning as we look at God's people is that God's love endures for all generations. The example, the illustration, the validation is appropriate for us as it was for them and when everybody in this room is gone and if the earth still stands, it will be the same for the next generation. Why? Because God's steadfast love endures forever. I hope that when you go home tonight, you'll take a look at that passage and you'll be able to say like Israel and Aaron and those who fear the Lord that his steadfast love endures forever. It's my go-to. I love this passage. You know, I, you know, life is interesting. Once you learn something, you love a lot of things. But At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you've hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. And yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest in your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Last scripture, and the passage is yours. I'm going to sing a song of invitation when I finish. If we can meet your needs in any way, please come forward. Jesus has been crucified. He was buried. He did something that no one else ever done. He was resurrected, never to die again. And here's what he says to the disciples. He says, now the 11 disciples went to Galilee. Isn't that an interesting statement? Are we used to 12? There's 11 now. To the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him. But some doubted, and Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you until the end of the age. Let us all say the steadfast love of the Lord endures forever. Will you stand as we sing the song of invitation? Let us.
The closing song will be number 175. Well, I want to thank Terry for an excellent message as always. Several announcements to share with you. Among our sick is Shannon Cochran, that's Don Becker's daughter, dealing with COVID. Uh, our sympathies go to the family of Donna Butler. Donna, pa Donna passed Friday. Uh, arrangements for her services are currently in progress, and we anticipate we will know more about that this evening. Uh, they will be conducted at McClure Schaefer. Uh, Kathy Dye came forward last week asking for prayers of the church. We ask you to keep that in mind. There is a card shower for Lisa Westbrook-Smith. She's undergoing chemo chemotherapy and radiation for her brain tumor. Her address is posted on the bulletin board in the lobby if you would like to send her a card and participate in that. We'd also like to purchase a gas card for them as they will be driving approximately uh, two hours, five days a week for the next six weeks for her treatments. If you'd like to contribute toward this, please turn donations into the office by the end of the day today. If you'd like to write a check, you can make that payable to the church and note Lisa's name in the memo section. The Washington County Right to Life Life Chain will be today from 2 to 3 p.m. That will be on Muskingum Drive in front of Green, Greenleaf Landscape. If you uh, would like information, more information about that, we do have a flyer for that out in the lobby as well. Karen Thompson is in need of a ride to this evening's services. If that's something that you can help with, uh, feel free to give Tracy a call uh, and she can get in contact with uh, Karen, let her know that you can provide that service and uh, let you know where to pick her up. I invite you back uh, every opportunity you have. This evening we'll gather together again at five o'clock. Uh, Harry will be speaking on the topic of this is the day that the Lord has made. Wednesday, we will continue our study of the book of Daniel. And of course, next Friday morning, or I'm sorry, next Sunday morning, whew, next Sunday morning, Roger will continue our study of James. If you show up Friday, you could probably catch Roger here at the building and talk to him about James, but I don't think there'll be a big class. 
Uh, following our final song, Adam Balter will have our closing prayer. So I invite you back this evening as we continue our worship. Good. Number 175, 175. If you're able to, please stand. We'll sing the first and last verses. Mm-hmm. Of the depth and the riches of God's saving grace, flowing down from the cross for me. Said the dead for my sins by the Savior was made, it is suffering on Calvary. Of the depth of such wonderful love, flowing boundless and full and free. And the debt for my sins was all paid in a suffering on Calvary. Oh, what marvelous mercy, what infinite love, what immeasurable grace I see. By his blood I am cleansed, I am happy and free through his suffering on Calvary. Oh, the depth of such wonderful love, flowing boundless and full and free. And the debt for my sins was all paid in his suffering on Calvary. Let us pray together. God, you truly are upright, and we always fall short as human beings. I thank you so much for your steadfast love. You've never changed. And um, let us let us have a steadfast faith so that way we can serve you and inherit the eternal eternal life that you have promised for those that love you. God, we want to pray for the many people that have been forgotten in this world. Um, that they're not alone. They can reach out in faith. And if need be, that any of us members of the church all across the world, that if we can reach out, spread that light, and bring this world up. God, we, we just, uh, if we, if we fall short, We always know that we can go to you in prayer and be renewed every day. Thank you for that. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.